Pepper Mill, one of my favorite spots to stop and grab something. If you're ever in here between the hours 2 and 5 p.m., you can get half off the Chinese section of the uh, venue. Always good to get some beef and broccoli or sweet and sour chicken for half yeah. price during those hours. Anyway, uh, so, as you probably saw in the last vlog, things did not go all that well for me. But, turning around pretty nicely of late. And uh, definitely had a few interesting hands to pass along. Before I even get into those, we had evidence, as I posted up on Instagram, at Ben Beach, that poker is not dead. We had a guy who was clearly there to have some fun, had never played a lot of poker, you could tell, but was just there to gamble. And one guy had opened, and this guy had just moved all in over the top. I think the guy had made it 100, and this guy had moved all in for over 1,000. And he moves all in and shows both cards. He shows ace-king. The other guy is tanking. He's got over a thousand dollar decision, but he can see both cards. Eventually, this guy turns over his hand, and he's got pocket kings. So obviously anyone who's played any poker at all knows this is a snap call. Except he's not snap calling, he's tanking. He just says, man, I, I have so much money, I don't want to lose this money. Eventually he does settle on the call and he ends up winning the hand, not surprisingly, with his pocket king. So, evidence that poker is not dead if guys will ship all in big, show both cards, and other guys aren't even willing to snap all in. I was just a little upset that I couldn't find myself getting in that situation. Night football is the Jets and the Browns. I think that's a pretty good indication that I am wasting time watching it and that doing a vlog might be a better play. Thanks again and welcome back. Those first shots that you saw there came out in the middle of the Nevada desert. That was when I went out to Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park and Sand Mountain Recreation Area. They'll be on Silver State sites here in a month, maybe two months. A uh, pretty fun trip. I didn't expect it to be a dirt road that I have to go on to get to Berlin Ichthyosaur, a place where uh, used to be an old mining town, and they just happened to find the fossil of an ichthyosaur and uh, plenty others uh, in the uh, middle part of the 20th century. But uh, anyway, that's not why you're here. Definitely a few things poker-wise to touch on. Uh, the phenomenon that I've been running into lately. And I'm gonna to touch on this phenomenon here coming up after a couple of hands. And uh, I had a really interesting day in which uh, actually turned into a late night where I was playing against a player who is one of these guys who you just don't know about. Most people who sit down at the poker table, you know their deal. You know that they're either a pro poker player you know that they are a retired guy. Uh, you know that they have a job and they play for fun. Uh, you usually know what the deal is. You know, I mean, most people know my deal. You know, obviously I have a job. Uh, you know, work 40 hours a week, but uh, I play professionally as a side job. Um, I think most people realize that. But anyway, this guy, I don't know his deal. I honestly don't. I've heard theories thrown out there that he's a trust fund baby. Uh, and he also could legitimately just be one of these grinder types, but for a variety of reasons, I find that a little hard to believe. So he doesn't even act human, first of all, which is why I call this section of the vlog Dismantling the Robot. So what ended up happening was there was a hand where he opens under the gun, which he does not do too often. He opens to $20 under the gun in a 3-5 game at the Pepper Mill. We get a call on the button, and I'm in the big blind with Jack-10 of diamonds. I make the call as well. 
The flop comes out 10-8-3, rainbow, with one diamond. Pretty decent flop for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and check and see what this uh, guy does under the gun. He bets 25. Play on the button makes the call. So definitely not a full that I'm gonna be making here. I'm gonna make the call as well. I'm gonna hope for a diamond, or obviously a jack or a 10 on the turn. I make the call, and the turn comes an offsuit queen. Comes the queen of clubs. I check again, and now the under the gun raiser checks. Seems pretty tough for him to have a big hand here when he gets two calls on the flop, and now he'd be checking this turn. Seems like if he had a queen or could beat a queen, would be definitely a spot that you want to bet, especially given the fact that, as I said, he could be a pro. I don't think he uh, necessarily has to be, but he's one of the very few guys you don't know about. So anyway, he checks, and the button checks. So turn gets checked through, and the river comes a six for a uh, final board of 10-8-3, queen, six. I decide that this might be worth a bet. I thought it was close, but I decided on a very tiny river value bet of $25 with the hopes of getting called by a week or 10 here, thinking that this guy under the gun may have not had anything given the fact that he essentially gave up on the turn. Instead, he raises me to 90. The button thinks about it for a while, and while he's thinking about it, I start to realize what's going on here. And what I didn't already mention is the fact that this guy has been known to slow play some over pairs on flops. Usually he doesn't do it on turns, I wouldn't have thought after betting the flop, but I have seen him slow play over pairs in the spots where you would never think it would be a good play to do so. So I thought that through, and since he raised under the gun, which he rarely does, I decided that there's a good chance that that's what he does have here. The button finally folds, and I decide to turn what was flopped top pair into a bluff because I could have a lot of straights in my range here having just called the flop and let out on the river. And hard to imagine that he would have a hand like Jack-9 in his hand raising under the gun, uh, or certainly 7-9, which was actually more the hand I was thinking that I was representing here. So I check raise him to 225, and he basically snap folds pocket kings face up. He then says something very insulting to me. I don't exactly remember what it was, but it was just something like, well, there's no way in the world that you could ever be doing anything like this. You're not a good enough player to have anything other than a set of sixes here. Which is hilarious, by the way, because there's no way I could ever have pocket sixes calling a flop bet in that spot with two other people in the hand. It's so obvious that if I have anything here, it's a straight. But anyway, he didn't somehow see it that way. He folded the pocket king's face up, and I decided to show him the bluff. And he could not believe uh, that I had done this, and he went off. Not so much insulting me personally, just insulting the play in every conceivable way. Uh, just saying how dumb it was. There's no way that the, you know, he, 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 ripped, he ripped the raise, he ripped the value bet, he ripped everything, just going off. In fact, I have some video of this. So that's how that looked. But anyway, the interesting hand actually came about a half an hour later. And it was a hand where he limped in under the gun plus one. A couple other people limp in as well. And I'm in the big blind with king deuce of clubs. I check my option and the flop comes out jack deuce three. Rainbow. I check and this robot-like guy that I'm talking about makes a bet of $20. Everyone else ends up folding to a relatively small bet here, so I go ahead and make the call. Turn comes the king of hearts. So I make kings and deuces. I check, hoping this guy's gonna bet again, hoping that I can get in a check raise. Sure enough, he does bet, and he bets pretty big. He bets 85. I check raise him to about the same amount that I just check raised with the bluff on the other hand. I make it 230. And before I can even get the 230 in there, he puts me all in for a thousand. I certainly didn't expect that, but uh, I felt pretty confident that King's Up was going to be good here. I end up making the call. River comes out the uh, seven of clubs. 
and he says, I have eight high. He shows the eight six of hearts for a turned flush draw that missed. So I end up doubling up there with <laughs> the powerhouse that is King Deuce. And I really do think that this all happened because I showed him the bluff. And again, this guy's not much of a guy at all. He's more of a robot. And uh, I really do think that I short-circuited this robot more than I ever thought I'd be capable of doing. And uh, that session ended up working out uh, pretty well for me. I was actually stuck probably 800, 900 at one point. I bought in for a total of 2,000, ended up cashing out for about a $500 win. So that worked out pretty well in, uh, in that session over at the Peppermill. Now I mentioned one other thing when I started this vlog and I said there's a phenomenon that's happening. And it's nothing new and nor is it a phenomenon. It's just something that's happening a lot and I wanted to describe it that way for the heck of it. This has always been a thing in poker, but I'm curious if any of you in your games across the country and for those of you outside of the United States, which by the way, I love hearing in the comments of where you guys are watching this vlog from when you're out of the US or when you're in the US, but it's really cool when you get international viewers. And that is the phenomenon of hitting and running. Now that's obviously always been something that happens, but for some reason to me, it's been happening constantly lately. And uh, I've had basically a break even couple of months, probably up a little bit, and I'd have to defer to the Poker Income Pro app to verify that, but it just has felt like every single time that any of these guys who, you know, and there haven't been a ton of guys in the game that have been great for the game. Not a lot of huge fish, certainly, but there've been a lot of guys who are decent. And just every time you can set your watch to it, one of these guys makes any money, and we're talking 200 or $300 win even, if that happens, they are out the door. I mean, it has been unreal. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's created this, this this environment where you just can't win because every time anyone makes any money, they just take it and bounce. And I know kind of the old adage is uh, quit while you're ahead and these guys aren't winning players. So maybe the, it's a smart move, but it just doesn't feel to me like that's the way that it used to be. And man, it's just been rampant lately with the hitting and running. I, uh, I actually called it the other day I'd lost a hand uh, that I will mention that uh, I had turned two pair and I'm, I'm actually just gonna fast like kind of fast forward through this hand but uh, I actually had the uh, the old jack seven of clubs out of the blind I turned two pair after calling a small flop bet just a bit frustrating for me, the money part of it. I'm not, I'm, and again, I don't want to, I'm not complaining about running bad, even though it hasn't been a great stretch for me. The hitting and running, though, has just been amazing to me lately. It's worse than I've ever seen it. And i um, just curious if any of you have thoughts on that. Uh, leave them in the comments down below. And if any of them are good enough, I will address those on the next edition of the vlog. As always, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at... Ben Deitch, uh, and you can uh, subscribe to this vlog if you haven't already. I do truly appreciate those of you who have. Uh, I know we picked up some Johnny Vibes fans last week. Uh, how about uh, Ian of South Creek Pizza here in Reno taking Johnny Vibes to his pizza joint, which is ironically about a five minute drive from my house here in South Reno. Great pizza, by the way, South Creek Pizza. For those of you who live here in Reno, probably uh, the best pizza in Reno, along with JJ's Pie Company over on 5th and Ralston. Uh, just as a uh, thing to give a shout out to there, but uh, Johnny Vibes, his last vlog, really good stuff here. From his trip up in the Reno area. That'll do it for this edition of the vlog, and we will see you next time.